I'm Sarah Clark. Welcome to Silver Bullet Song Lyrics. This is where I run into a situation in my life where I don't know what I'm gonna do, then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, I hear a song, the lyrics hit me just right, and it was like, it was written just for me to hear right at that moment, and it's like a magical solution or a silver bullet, and then all of a sudden, I know just what I'm gonna do. This happened just recently, and now I have a YouTube channel. <laughs> um, but you should probably know the why behind my channel is spreading positivity, and that means this will involve some positive thinking. <laughs> and the funny thing is, this situation was actually born out of a negative feeling I was having. Um, it was something that happened in my childhood. I gotta give you just a tiny bit of backstory and then I'll introduce you to the song. But in eighth grade, I was called a cross-dresser. You're probably thinking, I've been called worse. I have been called worse than that. It was the timing of the joke and I full on deserved it. I was, you know, a girl wearing all boy clothes, but I had this, I topped the whole thing off with um, this Chicago Bulls starter windbreaker my mom got me and I still love that jacket and I get excited thinking about it. But the timing of the joke was the important part of it because I had been thinking about girls being beautiful or cute. And I had a memory as far back as second grade of thinking a girl was beautiful. I also thought boys were cute. There was a boy in my 4-H club that was cute. So very, you know, at that time, I didn't, it was 1992, a small town. I did not know another gay person. So <laughs> it was very, uh, I didn't know what to think of the whole thing. But when she called me the crossdresser, I really thought that she knew that I was having those thoughts. And instead of being myself and being true to myself, at that moment, I just decided to start making changes and try to fit in, try to dress more like a girl. If I ever had a thought about a girl being beautiful, I completely buried it. Wouldn't even let myself think it. And, you know, from that, you know, when you start making those decisions and you start losing yourself, then you just kind of lose control of the whole thing and you forget where you start and this version of you begins, but it happened. And when I look back on it now, present day, I'm 38 years old and I attempt to live a fully authentic life. And with that, I, you know, I'm still, and I listen to my own heart and I try and make decisions based on that. So when I look back at this where I was not, you know, myself and true to myself, then I have a negative feeling about it. Another thing about me is I'm a spiritual seeker. So with that, I've been working with this amazing healer. She said a different way of looking at that childhood experience would be to forgive yourself for a decision you made because you only have the information you have when you make a decision and instead be grateful for it because that decision and then all the decisions I made after it collectively add up to what I have present day. And present day, I have so much to be grateful for. I have so many blessings. I have two amazing kids. I have a brave and honorable ex-husband. I have loved and have been loved by an amazing woman. So, you know, when she said that, you know, about forgiving myself and being grateful, <laughs> thinking of it, you know, positive thinking, I came away with a different point of view. And I've heard this song so many times by Johnny Cash, a boy named Sue, where he comes away with a different point of view. I instantly got thinking about that song. If you've not heard that song in a while or you've never heard that song, I'm going to include a link in the description down below. Give it a listen. Fantastic storytelling. Um, and a fun fact, Johnny Cash made that song famous in 1969, but it was actually written by humorist and poet Shel Silverstein. So, side note. But in the song, Sue is made fun of for you know, his name and has a tough childhood. And I should point out, I had the complete opposite childhood in that my parents very much loved me and my sister was my best friend. So very much loved, great childhood, <laughs> very different than Sue's, but back to Sue. So when he finally gets to confront his dad about giving him that name, his dad tells him his side of the story, which is he knew he wasn't going to be there and he wanted him to be tough. So he gave him that name. And when Sue realizes that his dad had accomplished just that, he came away with a different point of view and was grateful. So that <laughs> could see the similarities of coming away with a different point of view. But what happened when I listened to the whole song is where I got the silver bullet song lyric that I was looking for. Because at the end of the song, Sue says, and if I ever had a boy, I'm going to name him Bill or George, any other damn thing. But Sue, I still hate that name. Meaning he wouldn't put his son through the, the same pain that he had to endure. He wouldn't name his own son Sue. And I have to say, I feel the exact same way. If I ever had a daughter, and I don't have a daughter, but if I did, and she was being called out for being different, and in whatever way that would be, you know, if she was getting made fun of, I would tell her to be herself, listen to her own heart. Don't change any part of yourself to fit in or to make other people feel more comfortable. Be who you are. And, you know, I'm not naive enough to think that in 2018 that there wouldn't be pain involved in coming out because, you know, there would be. All I'm saying is that there's also pain involved in not being yourself. Um, so here's the positive thinking. Forgive yourself uh, for any mistakes you make because you only have the information you have when you make a decision. Be grateful because all of it adds up to who you are today. 
And then lastly, and probably most importantly, is finding the purpose in the pain. Because whether you're a boy named Sue, or you're me, or you're you watching this video, no one escapes this world without pain. So it's finding the purpose in the pain. And, you know, I can say for me, I have an example of finding the purpose in my pain. And um, I, I started drinking at a young age. And I have no idea to this day if it was me or that version of me that started it, but it happened. And I can say that you can't drink as hard as I did for 21 years without experiencing pain and regret and, you know, all that goes along with that. Um, but I can see the purpose in it in knowing that today, sober, I appreciate it so much and I can find joy in things. And I wouldn't have known that had I not gone through everything that I went through. So I'm grateful for it. And so in conclusion, Sue wouldn't name his son Sue and I wouldn't tell my daughter to pretend to be someone she's not. One thing that really helped me when I was going through all this was I read Shelley Wright's memoir and in it she has this thing where she saw in someone's shirt it said, God doesn't make mistakes. <laughs> and you know, I have to, I, th I think whether you're in eighth grade or you're 38 or you're even 83, I think it's a good thing to remember. Be who you are because God doesn't make mistakes. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you happen to like my story or maybe you like songs that hit you just right, who knows, please consider liking and subscribing. I hope to have new content every Sunday. I hope to see you soon. And in the meantime, I hope you're having the best day ever.